Set the mood right. Ladies and gentlemen, you are going into Joe's Juicy Journal. Ding! Kill the intro, sis. You know she's not your average Joe. Not your average Joe. What's going on everybody? It's me, Joe, and so I have all of this content, all of these journal entries, which will hopefully become a book someday, but for now I just wanted to share some with you and get you excited about writing or just give you something to listen to because why not? It's like just this is what we're on this earth to do is listen and share and reciprocate. These were Joe Club prompts that were happening last year, but there are still daily prompts, so it's really a great way to like start thinking about things. When do you know you're in love? My eyes open wider in an attempt to absorb every last drop of the moment. My mouth has a permanent smile, uncontrollable. Do we choose what or who to love or does it choose us? I believe in energetic pulls. Chemistry so perfect it seems scientific, but more natural than anything calculated in a lab. It's care that creeps up, curiosity of their days and moods, an itch grows to uncover what occupies their mind. If you're let in, you're closer, and when in love, that's the ultimate goal, closeness. Perhaps that's the bottom line, the desire to get closer, to allow yourself the risk of falling at the mercy of someone else's care and attention. How do we verify it's the person we love and not all of their assets? How can we confirm we love them as people, and even more, like them? Is it through observation, coexistence, interaction? Is it enhanced and skewed by reciprocation? It could be admiration and respect also. It's acceptance of the flaws and wanting to be involved regardless. Love is longing that cannot be tamed, but it takes work to grow that love. That's what I want. Cool. Let's see what else I got. What's your relationship with time? As a kid, anytime someone would ask me, what's your biggest fear? I'd stand up from the other kids that said things like spiders and snakes. And instead, I'd respond with a complex answer. My biggest fear is time. I'd say it as early as six years old. When asked to elaborate, I'd explain I was afraid of running out of time to spend with my family and that it would all go by way too fast. I started journaling at age 10 or 11 when it helped me deal with my anxiety of beating time. At least if I write things down in detail, they seem to last forever. As I've grown older, I'm no longer afraid of time, but instead, I respect it. As an impatient person, hearing, it's all timing, would irritate me. In my mind, if you wanted to make something happen, it was always possible. But I'd usually get blocked at some opportunity, or romance would crumble, and friendships would grow apart just as they were supposed to, thanks to the thing I once feared, time. Maybe it's coming with maturity. I do my part and let time work its magic. Damn, I'm getting old. <laughs> that was also 2020. I also encourage you guys to write along with me. Whatever prompts I'm reading, you should just write them too because they're just good prompts. So what limiting beliefs are holding you back from living your dream life? I have to admit, I only just learned about the concept of limiting beliefs in the last six months. I never heard of the term conceptually, but had been carrying the weight on my chest for years with little awareness. Isn't it funny that we can go so long without taking inventory of what's actually going on? I numbed any negativity in editing videos and responding to emails for a decade. Even having built a life rooted in discomfort, I had found my comfort. I stayed in the thing I knew worked and suppressed my ideas as if they weren't welcome in my own mind. No one was telling me my ideas sucked, but rather they were shoved down into a small section of my notebook, sandwiched between grocery lists and doctor's appointments. My limiting belief convinced me I'd never be enough alone. I'd always need a business partner, a brand, a team, the mountain of ideas that accumulated throughout the years seemingly got so tall its shadow made it hard to see a clear direction forward. But one by one, I'm bringing each idea to life, making it easy to see the goodness ahead. I forgot I wrote that and it still applies today. And it still applies today. Okay, let's just take a moment to digest that. What limiting beliefs are holding you back? Because I forgot that I I didn't forget because I'm still feeling slightly similar things. This was two years ago now, but I am amazed at how 
like the writing brings me back to that feeling and I've already come a long way from this. Like I remember when I was writing this, I was just nervous because I got out of so many partnerships. I, I broke up with my ex, I broke up with my business partner, I broke up with my agency all in one week. and. All of that made me feel like I was never gonna be on my feet again. And now I'm slowly seeing that's not true because she is standing on her feet. One, two. Okay, next journal. I'm only gonna read like four because I gotta preserve some goodies for the book, you know? What's new in your life? Travel. For the past year and a half, the pandemic stopped fun in its tracks. And my plane tickets were like punching cards for work. I moved around while everyone else stood still, but it wasn't on my terms. Everything is more gratifying when it's on your terms. Or maybe I'm a control freak who only enjoys things I had a part in planning. I guess I like remembering that I'm capable. So the idea of not executing makes me feel useless and therefore worthless. So yeah, I have a deep rooted seed to prove that I can achieve, plan and pull together incredible things and travel scratches that itch. Staying still allows my anxiety to pool and drown me. I've been waking up at 3 a.m. with a pounding heart because I'm home. And unlike most people, being in comfort gives me discomfort. I forgot how at home I feel away. Two months of travel and my wanderlust came back with a vengeance. It's time to be young and enjoy my youth while I have it. I'll go to Milan October 10th and I'm already enjoying this time at home more because I know I'm leaving. I think that's it. <laughs> I just abruptly stopped. What a concept. Like, do you feel more comfortable in comfort or in discomfort? I know it sounds weird to say like, oh, you feel comfortable in discomfort, but I, I actually do, I think, because I've like trained myself to feel like being out of my comfort zone is the norm. So anytime I'm like too comfortable and I feel like relaxed, it gives me anxiety. Do I got a problem? Probably, should probably get a therapist. Okay, great. What is your biggest challenge right now? How are you gonna overcome it? This is in 2020. On most days, I swear the only reason I'm aware that time passes is when I notice I need to refill my coffee. I try and make it a point to stop and let the stillness of the moment remind me to take an exhale. And yet, even though it's the one thing we do from the moment we're born until we die, I often forget to do it, breathe. <sighs> that sentence warranted a profound inhale and exhale. For the amount of clutter piling up in my mind, it needs some extra air. I like my rooms like I like my mind, well ventilated. There's a constant traffic jam of ideas up there I can't seem to get under control. It's like the 405 at rush hour, only Angelina knows would get that. Which reminds me, my lease is almost up and I gotta pack my dusty things again to store away. No use in having an apartment if I'm never there. Clear house, clear mind? I hope so. I forgot about that, I forgot about that. Up until yesterday or the day before, pain was something I knew molded me into who I am. My personal experience of seeing an obvious injustice, a difference in treatment, a vicious stare, that all shaped me. For most of my life, I've been the only person of color in the room. The more important the rooms got, the less black and brown faces I saw. I used to think, if I work harder than everyone, my skin color won't matter. I truly believe that. I buried the moment I was called the N-word right before having to film with the old white woman. I had overheard call me that. I buried being on a set and given a broom to dance salsa with while my white counterpart was literally strolling the park. I spoke up that time. I found ways to creatively pitch concepts where my differences can add value rather than be put as last priority because I'm not easy to understand. It wasn't until this week that the pain started pouring out. I never swallowed this shit spoon of limiting beliefs, but pain snuck in regardless. It didn't stop me, but it paralyzed me this week. I've been ignoring it instead of making it a part of my message. How can I educate people in thinking more open-mindedly? I used to push through insensitive comments about my skin color because I knew I was oftentimes the first black person they were interacting with. I wanted to be the best representative, the smartest, the most memorable. So when they think of people of color, maybe they think twice before adding it to ignorant noise. My pain comes from understanding people are treated differently based on having won the lottery of who they were born as. Why can't people see that? We inherited the pain from our ancestors, but have their strength in our DNA. We can only hope to better the injustice a little more in our lifetime. That was during Black Lives Matter. Okay, I think that's it. Um, I hope that gave you the little inspiration to write. 
I can't read all my goodies, but just follow Jill Club every day for daily prompts. Join the club. I would love to see you there. And let me know if you'd like more journal entry readings. It was like a random, I was just like, uh, I did my hair, so might as well just film a YouTube video, you know? <laughs> all right, let me try to speak a different language now. Wish me luck. Joe here in Thessaloniki, Greece. Hope you enjoyed that video. It was a joy to relive my journal entries and I'm here racking up more life stories for more great writing. If you would like to learn how to write more mindfully, I've made a whole course on it. It's called The Art of Mindful Journaling and it is dope. I read more journal entries there. I give you techniques. It's really a breakdown of how you can turn journaling into this lifelong habit. Obviously, it's changed my life. So I'm sure it will change yours. <laughs> okay, see you later.